Hi everyone and welcome to the Resident Rule Breakers. I'm Kayla. I'm Camille. And uh, today's episode that we're going to be discussing is episode 413 of the Resident and there's two titles they had for this. IMDb says it's one thing and uh, Hulu says it's another. So I'm gonna give both titles, uh, Finding Family or A Children's Story. They're using both titles apparently for some reason. I don't know exactly. They, they changed it partway through or something, but both those titles were in the running mm -hmm. for this episode. So I don't actually know which one the official title is at this moment. So because different places are calling it different things. It was written by Mark Halsey and Anthony Chen Kui and directed by Kelly Williams. And uh, first off, uh, Conrad and Nick had their baby shower. So um, I just thought it was adorable how Kyle and Marshall were like all in on trying to, you know, be good grandfathers and, you know, yep. I, thought was, I thought it was adorable. I, um, I'm just like, I, I'm glad that the baby is almost here and they had like, the, um, I've, I'm glad that, you know, they had all of the, everybody that they were close to at the shower. That was so cute. Um, what else? Like Marshall gave um, the grandbaby a start um, portfolio. <laughs> you know, like the baby isn't even born yet, and she's probably richer than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering she's got a grandfather that's a billionaire, uh, yeah, yeah. But I thought it was funny. Kyle and Marshall were. Uh, trying to get the the decorations and stuff, and Kyle's like got a bad thing about orange, and some people were laughing about it online. Uh -huh. But I sat there thinking to myself, I work in an art based field, and I can tell you that different colors give different emotions to different people. So I could see, I could see where you know a bad experience with a certain color can make you not want to like it anymore. Yeah. So don't don't discount that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but um, the thing about Billy was she's keeping herself busy through all this because, uh, and I know you're probably gonna have to want to say something about this because when I saw it, I just uh, later. Yeah, but Billy. Um, hey. Oh. She's, keeping herself busy to try to prevent herself from doing, blabbing this secret that she has. And eventually she tells Nick, uh, Nick actually apparently already knew that Nick, that Billy had been raped, but yes, she didn't she know that Billy had had a baby. So. No, I mean, this was like when she was 13. Yes, which is, I get why Billy is the way she is about this. She doesn't want to relive this horrible experience she went through. And she was 13 and, and she doesn't want to tell this kid that, that he was a rape baby. Why would you want to find that out? How would you, I, I mean. <sighs> I, I don't even like, I can't even imagine what that's like. There's like, um, <sighs> I've seen several people, several shows have this storyline that like, if they had a, um, you know, the, the baby, cause like, you know, they face it out of the and stuff, but the, the child who was a product of rape tries to reach out to the parent, but on, they didn't know that they were a product of rape. Um, I would, I, I understand Billy's side of the thing also, but also at the same time, it's like, I just wish that she could have just told him. 
you know, she could have just said, look, I can't. Because, you know, her, his last text to her was, why aren't you, why don't you want to talk to me? Why don't you want to see me or whatever? I just wish that she could have just told him why or something. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I have a feeling there's more to this story. Yeah, although at the same time, um, like, that's, I don't want to talk to you because you're a product of rape or whatever. So is it something that you kind of like, um, what's that called? Text to the person. That's something that you would say to them face to face. You know what I mean? Yes. That is a face-to-face conversation, and right now, Nick is the only other person who knows it, and uh, I have a feeling, uh, probably not this next episode, and if we get renewal, I have a feeling it might trail into the next season, but, um, which, by the way, the new renewal has not been announced yet, so. Um, I know, right? Somebody, I, like, I don't know if it's gonna, I don't know what's going on, what's a lot of the TV shows are not. I take so long. But yeah. Um, but I just wanted to bring that up that I have a feeling they, they wouldn't have introduced this storyline if there wasn't more to it. Um, yeah. But I thought what Billy did for them for the baby shower was really awesome was she had pictures of their mothers. And uh, we finally found out the names of their moms um and you mm-hmm. messaged me yeah and it yeah it, like baby i got i know the baby's names the baby's it was georgiana is um conrad's mom's name and grace is mick's name and i Nick, said the baby's Nick's name. Mom, yeah. yeah Nick's mom's name and I said, the baby's name I bet is going to be Georgiana Grace. And then the, um, it's going to be Gigi, which is Gilmore Girls. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, Rory's sister's name on Gilmore Girls was Gigi, so. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's Georgiana Grace or Grace Georgiana. I actually like the names. I, I wonder if the pictures that like they had on the frame were actually Emily and Nick. I mean, Emily and um, Matt as kids. Because I was looking at those pics, I was like, is that them? You know what I mean? As kids. But uh, oh. but I think it would be a good, because, you know, the grandmothers aren't there. And you can see the reaction, not only from Nick and Conrad, but from Marshall and Kyle. Yeah. That, that's how much this present meant to them, you know. So it would be a good... Uh, owed to the grandmothers. This, uh, I do think that uh, I am angry that this is the first and only time that we ever got their names. I know, it you should know? have been brought up more. because like seasons, we knew about their moms, we knew about their the stories of how they lost their moms. Kind of thing with our Conrad. Well, not thing. really with Conrad, but with but, Nick, yeah. that one's blatant. That one's yeah. known. Yeah, with Conrad's is still a mystery and up in the air. Like, hello, what you dropped the ball on that storyline? You <laughs> promised us a story about her, but never like gave it to us. So anyway, um, but we never knew their names at all for four seasons and yeah and now it's like the week before the baby is born oh her name is jo- their names are Georgiana Grace it's it's like I just have a feeling that they just they finally gave it to us because that's going to be the baby's name yeah. yeah yeah I do too and but it should have been earlier because you know Conrad part of Conrad's storyline is his trauma from losing his mom uh, part of Nick's storyline is early on, first episode even, she mentions her mom died of a medical um, medical issue 
that was not done right. So it's in their storylines that they're losing their the trauma from losing their mom. So it really should have been brought up sooner. Um, but I, I think it'll be if 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 we've guessed this correctly, then I think it'll be a good ode to the to the grandmothers. Yep. And I thought it was a, a sweet gesture on Billy's part. Um, I've actually come to really like Billy at first. I was really questioning her, but I've come to like her quite a bit. And um, I think they've humanized her quite a bit, and especially with this new storyline. And I want to see how that plays out um, for her. But I, I, people who um, don't really understand the reason Billy is the way she is, uh, this gives insight, and I completely understand. I will literally cuss out somebody who tries and victim blames anybody, even if it's a fictional character. I will literally cuss out somebody. <laughs> yeah, do not victim blame Billy. We will be on your ass for that one. Um, but I, I, I get where she's coming from, and I'm interested to see where they take that because right now she's against it, but she could have um, influence from Nick, uh, from the um, baby being born or whatever to open up, whatever yeah. the case may be. We'll see what happens. The uh, other storyline that really, really hit home for me was seeing Devon and Leela uh, and at the end of the episode, Leela finally opened up to him and said, uh, you know, all this pressure, I really don't, I just, I know I, I can't let be a robot, you know, I have to connect to my patients. Yep. And Devin was like, I, I, I realized that too, but they, um, there's a man they helped who uh, got injured in an apartment fire and he was a hero while he for... survived surgery, he didn't survive the night. He's a hero. Let's, let's not forget the man like literally went into a burning building to save one of mm -hmm. the tenants too. Yeah, so like yeah. I mean he had a rib in his aorta. You don't survive that. It's just that's a hard one. Yeah. Also, uh, he um, what's that called? He sounded like he was a landlord or something. He was the landlord. Yep. And to have a landlord that's that connected to their tenants, like that's rare. Like this man obviously cares about his tenants, and he lives in the building, obviously. So, uh, but they tried to save him, and you can see how passionate Lila was to save him. But it reminded me of Conrad. I mean, not Conrad, uh, Devon and the uh, pilot with Chloe when she was doing the compressions, right? Yes. Uh, like she, he, it, yeah, he, it reminded me stuff. of that scene. I was like, oh, this is a flashback to Devon and his first patient. Like with the compressions, I was like, yeah, this is a mirror. They're trying to mirror Devon and Leela a little bit. And, yeah. And while I like the fact that they have a connection, I still don't want them dating. Yeah, no, I don't want them dating either. But I can't deny that there's chemistry there. So I just don't want them dating. Oh, I, I, I'm denying it. <laughs> I'm still denying it. No. But yeah, um, I, I, I just don't want... I, I don't want the dating period. <laughs> but the, uh, her character, um, in the absence of Seanette, is going to be expanded more. Same with Billy. They're both going to be expanded more, especially when and if we get a fifth season. So, <sighs> yep. Um, but what I really. <sighs> thought was weird was uh the, obviously Devin really didn't know how close Kane and Rose had gotten and his reaction to seeing them in the coffee shop together was just like uh I don't like this and I really I don't blame him so I found his reaction just a little much but even Conrad was like what why are you acting like this yeah because 
it's his, it's the girl's personal life, who she wants to hang out with, who whether you like her new boyfriend or not. That is not you don't have a say in that. You're, no, you're and not- he he doesn't. But obviously, it really affected Devin, you know. But you know, yeah, well, it's actually like a biatch. It's like. <laughs> Who gives a crap who she's dating? You're her doctor. Will you stop acting like a baby and just like deal with it? You know, you don't have to, you don't have any right to dictate to, you don't have an opinion. You don't have a right to an opinion on who she hangs out with. You know what I mean? Yeah. The only thing he has a right to opinion on is her medical care. Um, Exactly. She didn't ask you, oh, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on Dr. Cain for or whatever she didn't ask you for um uh, it's just like that whole that's his reaction was just i icky to me it was like that was so unnecessary that was so stupid but because of this reaction Devin pretty much uh sends her off to conrad and says can you take care of her you know but yeah um through, through majority of the episode and <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh but you know um rose is cured um it worked so that's amazing yeah that was um the dedication at the end of this um episode was so beautiful it was so sad too because like they said that it's sad because there's curious out there, but it's too late for so many people, you know, who keep, who have died already in, mm-hmm. in the process of like finding. Yeah, it's just um, sad. It is sad, but yeah, it was um, when we interviewed Daniela and Eric back and before the before the season four premiere. Um, they brought this up, the storyline up. Of Rose, yeah. and they dedicated it to this patient of Daniela's, actually. Yeah. And um, so. Her shit. Which is just sad. Did she write this last this week's episode? She did not, but I think she wrote last week's episode. Oh uh, well, um, I do know that somebody posted it. Uh, um, it was they talked about the resident on CNN. And I am not surprised that CNN talked about it because I know that Daniela is like one of their correspondents or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm just but, sad that all those people could have could be could be saved. You know what I mean? But um, also, like, I mean, you yeah, think it, about it's it. sad. It's you sad. You think about it. The AIDS, they're, they're talking about the murder, virus, murder vaccines being used for AIDS or whatever. So thinking, you know, be, because COVID is bringing to like murder vaccines, they're thinking about using that now for AIDS. And I'm sitting there going, what about the millions of people who have died already and it's like too late it just breaks my heart i mean it's great but it breaks my heart to think of the people who could have lived you know what i mean yeah exactly and um obviously uh roses was cane but she also overexerted herself and with her with exercising and ended up um worried that she was having a crisis but ended up she's just having muscle pain and stuff and also um rib pain which is costochondritis which is exactly what i had as a complication of covid so it hurts it makes you feel like you're like can't breathe you can't move so i get why she was freaking out because believe me it's not pleasant it took me months to recover and actually um the covid vaccine helped cure that for me so but that's only because it was a complication of COVID for me. It can it can manifest from anything. Um, so it's just inflammation in the rib cage. Yeah. But yeah, when I said that, I was like, I went through that. Like the last two months of my life have been dealing with that. So yes. 
um, it hurts bad. Yep. So I, I do get why she would have freaked out over that one. Um, AJ's mom, her treatment's working, but you know, like I said last week, I still don't know if I really, I don't know if I would want my life prolonged like this, but apparently it's working for her. So, I mean, he's relieved, you know. Yep. But, uh, so that, that's a good thing for him. Um, so, but, uh, and then there's um, Sammy. Sammy is returned and uh, we didn't want uh, Jake and Greg to adopt her, but apparently they are. I say that I, I didn't know. I don't. I don't think we ever said that we didn't want to adopt her. I say, for me personally, I said that I don't. It. I think you know, a lot of people were saying that they wanted him to adopt her, without thinking about the complications that. A, adopting a special needs child brain you know what I mean? i'm glad that he you know said is taking her and i just wanted people to be realistic and realize like it's a lot more complicated especially if she's a preteen they were expecting a newborn and it add on the health complications or whatever so it is more complicated than just like you know cinderella storyline that people had that oh let, he's just gonna take her in or whatever see what I mean mm -hmm. but um so <laughs> let's not take me as like a uh, <laughs> villain by saying I don't want them to have a chance no 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 I, it's not that I want them to, to you know get a happy ending here but I'm being realistic on what this ending is you know Sammy's got issues she in these two episodes she's been she's had two surgeries yeah and yeah. major surgeries bell did another surgery to fix her colon or to fix her digestive tract and because she wasn't eating and she got hard so yeah yeah in, she's finally eating but um i thought it was really cute that bell was trying to bring her something that would not upset her stomach. I really love that. I also love that, like, you know, it, they brought something that was of culture, um, you know, to the hospital for her because, you know, she's Chinese. A, you know, he brought kanji soup, which is, like, really good Chinese soup. <laughs> Made by AJ's dad. Yeah. And stuff. So it was, like, it wasn't just, like, he was you know, being a good guy or whatever, but he was also respectful of the culture that she was brought, brought up in, by bringing food that he, you know, was appropriate for her kind of thing. I like yeah. that. I like that. Um, you know, despite the fact that Jake is his former stepson, he's still trying and to I think it seems be, like be that... some type of grandfather figure to this kid. Yeah. 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 I like, um, it seems like Jake is now more forgiving of Belle. Like, they're, like, hugging now, and they're, mm -hmm. yeah. like, So, if Belle is this emotionally attached to Sammy, uh, he probably shouldn't be doing surgery on her any longer. Yeah, I was saying, I was going to say that, too. But also at the same time, I mean, like, that's his brain, baby. And, well, can he not play with her as a grandbaby? <laughs> you know but and her I english like, is getting better too so yeah she's she's learning very quick <laughs> yeah i mean there had to be a significant um gap between last week's episode and this week's episode it is just the, the developments in this week's episode are just too there's a, there's a couple weeks in there uh, i would say a couple months couple weeks or a couple months at least in there between these two episodes because um nick's too far along in her pregnancy and 
you know, she, you know, Sammy's recovering from surgery and Kane and Rose are, have developed and, and AJ's mom is almost cured of her cancer. Yeah, there's just a lot of developments that are just too far along. Yep. Um, yep. The one thing I did notice is there was no kit. Yeah. Uh, she apparently did film for the episode and it was good. Yep. Don't know why. But uh, uh, there was a BTS photo posted by Amy Holden Jones um, on her Instagram of Jane and Malcolm rehearsing a scene, and it was apparently on the cutting room floor. So, yep. but she did film for the episode, just didn't make it for time, apparently, or something. Yep. But um, it is what it is, you know. Um, I just, I, you know, Nick's obviously gone into labor. And um, so that is the major crux of next week's episode is Nick giving birth. And um, a lot of people are excited. Uh, all I said too, because it is a season finale and we have no knowledge of a new season on the horizon at this moment. So, yeah. Next week's episode um, is called Past, Present, Future. And obviously, we've already mentioned one of the major plot lines, um, the baby. Um, the raptor's life begins to fall apart and turns to Kane. I'm assuming it's with his mom. So yes. that, would, that would make a lot of sense, especially from the promo I saw. And... Um, Devin and Belle are working together on a surgery that can save multiple lives, and Kit has to deal with a moral repercussion of what she did to save the hospital. So, not only is, I think, let's see here. Yeah, Glenn's in the episode, obviously. He's got a grandbaby on the way, but he's also the chairman of the board. So, I have a feeling that there's going to be some type of maybe a balancing gap between those two storylines for him. Yep. Um, but yeah, um, and so is Kyle. So we've got both granddads in the in episode to see their granddaughter come into the world. So, um, when and if we get news, uh, on renewal, we'll find out like, like they're the new, the renewals and stuff are gradually leaking out over from all the, um, sites and stuff and believe me this is not one that would have just we would just bypass i'm looking every day and uh it's just last year it took them a week or two after upfronts to even reveal that they'd renewed so they've already probably made a decision and haven't revealed it yet yep yeah anyway i just want to say thank you for the birthday wishes i did not um get uh I've I've been on Facebook jail for like seven days. But um also uh, another birthday. Matt Zucri's birthday is next week. His yep. birthday is May the 20th. And lo and behold he'll be 44 years old. So there's that as well. Uh so next Thursday it's Matt's birthday. Yep. Uh, yeah, you guys, uh, keep don't if you guys haven't already, please go to giveinia.org to donate to help with the COVID crisis. Um, over there, that's yeah. about it. Here, here in America, we are loosening restrictions, we've got vaccines over there in India, they're running out of space in hospitals, they're running out of equipment and PPE and and. Oxygen oxygen and, and there's no space for the people who are dying from this virus over there because it's just overwhelming um yeah. so if you can try to help india battle their covid covid crisis uh please do it's giveindia.org yeah and i'm pretty sure you've um if you follow manish on social media you've probably seen him post about it as well so yeah um, our Patreon account is patreon.com forward slash 
the resident podcast and it's there to help support the podcast financially uh things like hosting and equipment and 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 stuff like that to to help us keep it alive and growing and uh, so that's what that's there for so help support us and when we are, are capable of giving you a little more more sneak peeks and stuff we will um we also have uh, ways to contact us. We have an email address. So if you just want to send us an email, you know, you have a, you know, want to say hi, or, you know, you have a birthday wish for Matt, send it to us. It's the resident rule breakers at gmail.com. And it's, that's one way to, to get that to us. Uh, Facebook, we have our Facebook page, which is the resident rule breakers podcast which is about to be a year old, the Facebook page. So it's exciting that we, we've had these accounts for a year now. So, and then we have the Facebook group, which is the resident Fox fans, which is linked to the Facebook page. So if you're not in the group, please join, answer all the questions. What, and I do mean all of them. Don't, and, and when I ask you who's your favorite character, I mean, answer a, a character from the resident, please. And I'm gonna ask you your favorite scene. Uh, you, you can't be some random thing, okay? I don't know. It's not gonna get you into group because we won't know that you've actually watched the show. <laughs> Pet peeve. Because um, we do read those. Um, anyway, so Facebook group, Facebook page. And then we have Instagram, which is at the resident podcast. And then we have Camille's, which is the, the resident fan page, which is um, at the resident on Fox fans. And then I'm at KB country 37. And then we have our yep. Twitter account, which is at resident podcast. Yep. And there are ways you can listen to the podcast. There are, it's on multiple platforms. And I actually, I do apologize last week because I accidentally uploaded a blank file to the podcast and that's my fault because I was in a hurry to try to get it up and so I couldn't really troubleshoot it very much because I had to go to work um but the fact is I did fix it so for those of you who are listening to this one and wondering where the other podcast is it's it's there now it's fixed um but I will be checking files from here on out after I edit them um, but anyways, we're on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. And you have a another podcast. Uh, yeah, um, if you guys are the Hallmark fans, Hallmark movie fans, I have another podcast called Hallmark Heartbeats. It is all about Hallmark movies. I review Hallmark movies. Also, I've had several interviews with several of the actors on the show and stuff under, under the movies. So um, follow, you can listen to me on all platforms that Kayla's already listed. Again, it's called Hallmark Heartbeats. She also and, has a Buy Me a Coffee page. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> buymeacoffee.com slash Mark Heartbeats. That one is um, about. It's pretty much. A, it's pretty active on there. I post all of the um, unedited interviews on to the Buy Me a Coffee, as well as like extra podcasts on there. As um, also we have Instagram, Hallmark Heartbeats, and stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my podcast. If you guys want to yeah. check it out? This yeah. weekend. This weekend they have a. New, video, new movie out called Sweet Carolina. And it stars two big Hallmark stars, um, Tyler Hines and Lacey Chabert. So yeah, that's a big deal for, for Hallmark. So, so uh, if you like Hallmark movies, check that out. But um, next week's podcast will be about episode 414, which is uh, Past, Present, Future. That's the name of the episode. And so uh, we will discuss um, the Conic Baby and AJ's mom and, you know, all this other stuff that's going on in this episode. And hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed here, you can't see me, but I know, um, just know that I'm crossing my fingers that we'll have renewal news 
um, going into hopefully a hiatus. So, so oh. until next week, I'm Kayla. I'm Camille. Bye, guys. Bye.